So if you're looking to deploy object detection models in under five minutes, let me show you how you could do it with Robofoe Rapid. So here's a bunch of examples that you can see right here. We're gonna be going over a few of these cases to see how it performs. So we could go ahead and test it out. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Kevin. I've been doing robotics and AI for 10 plus years and have lots of resources on my channel. I also have a master's robotics and AI bundle as well as a robotics projects bundle that you can check out at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So for those that came from YOLO, we know that the process to collect all your data set and then actually train it is a pretty time consuming process. So what Robofoe came up with is really a game changer because they trimmed this whole process down that could have take hours to just only five minutes. So the first example that we're gonna do is gonna be the sushi example that we saw in our thumbnail. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing you're gonna see is that it's gonna prompt you to ask you what objects are you looking for? So here I'm gonna say sushi, then I'm gonna go ahead and click find my objects. So it's gonna take a couple of seconds here and you can see that it has found my sushi. And down here you can see there's this um, progress bar for the video and basically you could trim it to um, jump to anywhere you want in this video and it could go ahead and do the detection again to see how it works. So you could go ahead and review the model and you could see uh, frame by frame is going to check if it can actually detect it correctly and you could go ahead and skim through it to see you know the parts that it may have messed up and you could do some correction. So here is generating the model and then once it's done you could see that uh, we could essentially drag it at any frame to double check and you can see that you know just from looking at the different frames here if we slowly drag across it's able to detect pretty accurately all the um, sushi that's going along the conveyor belt so you saw that it just took a couple of seconds in real time it's really fast and it's able to basically figure out a model for you to use and deploy so there's a button here at the bottom right that my body is blocking. Just go ahead and click publish and use model. So this will actually publish all the data here and you can see right away I was able to get my code. There are different options here. You can see we have Python, JavaScript or HTTP. So depending on your application, you could choose the programming language that best suits your use case. So if I, for example, if I go ahead and choose Python, all you gotta do is do a pip install inference dash SDK. And all you need to do is copy and paste this section of code and you're able to go ahead and detect sushi in your images. Now, just for fun here, let's go ahead and try another example. So this is a basketball hoop example from a POV looking from down and above. So let's go ahead and try this one out and see how it performs. So you can also, right here is showing you basketball, right? But we can also go ahead and play with different prompts to see if you could detect different things in the images. So for now, let's go ahead and use basketball. So I'm gonna go ahead and click find my object. So for example here, if I come on the top right and I click basketball and click find object, you can see that I found a basketball here. So if I go ahead and review my model, this is the part that is going to try to apply to every frame and then we can review the results. So this is very fast. You can see, you know, we're already at 70% and live as I'm talking. And you can see right here, it has finished generating the model and it pretty much captured where the basketball is at every frame. So you can see how fast this was able to do the job, which is quite impressive. You can see, um, I'm clicking through different frames here and it's able to, you know how fast the basketball is moving because someone is throwing it. So considering the speed and everything, I would say this is a pretty high performing um, model here. So we can also test out different objects. So if we come back here, we could reset it. So you actually just go ahead and type a new object here. So. Uh, let's try, you can see on the board, these tiny little studs that's probably going to be nails or screws. So I'm going to type in screws here and see if we could understand that. And maybe have another scene here and I do screws. 
just misspelled it, screws, find object. You can see that it wasn't able to find it. So you could go ahead and edit in, in those cases that you can't find it, you could switch to editing mode and you could go ahead and you know draw it here to tell it it's a screw, for example. And I could come here and um, go to review model to see if you can understand the screws. Sometimes you might need to select more, but just for the sake of testing, let's see how it does. And it's able, to, you know, just with one point, it was able to think all of these on um, the baseboard are screws. And then it thinks that these little things in the, um, the net here, the chains is also screws. So that tells me that we probably have to give it a little bit more data. So if I come back here to edit, um, I could find more objects here. So new object. Okay, so I ended up restarting it, but we're gonna go ahead and label a few of these. So when you're in object editing mode, just go ahead and select all the ones that look like screws here. And you can see we're go ahead and labeling some of these. Okay, so I'm not gonna label all of them. So just kind of want to see if it could extend to other cases and go ahead and review model. Uh, I'm just gonna try to extrapolate this. And you can see that it has detected the screws, but again, it's confusing the chains with the screws again. So this particular case is a very tricky problem. So we could go ahead and try some other samples. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and test one more example here. This one is with cars driving on the road. So we're gonna first use the default car object that it was testing out here and go ahead and click find my objects. It's gonna find objects here up on the top right. And you can see if I click through the different frames, um, I could review the model just to see how it performs overall. And very quickly it's able to detect all the cars. I could check the different frames here. And if I want to find other objects, I could come here. Uh, let's say I want to find license plate. And I click find object. Let's see how well it does. And look at that, very immediately I was able to find it. And if I click review model, let's go ahead to see if it could find simultaneously uh, both of the things, the license plates and the, whoa, something happened with the, okay, let me zoom in a little bit. But let's see if we can find the license plate and the car. You can see that it was able to detect some of these cases here. Um, some of these here is not detecting, but as it gets closer, you can see that it was able to detect it. So in this case, I probably just need to get a few more. Um, you can see I could check some of these cases here, but the main idea is you could just come back here and try to relabel them. But I think the main issue with this video is that because it's such low quality, some of the cars in the back, the license plate is essentially a blur, so you can't really see anything. That's why the cars that's closer to the camera was able to detect it. But anyway, this was very interesting to try out. It's a very quick and easy way to deploy your object detection model. So go ahead and try it out for yourself.